today we have Wendy Stewart. How are you? Good. How are you, Mario? Good. I. You've only been in the building for about five minutes, and all we've been doing is <laughs> laugh for the last five minutes. Even Reggie, who does all of my camera and editing work, um, we, we're just having a good time. And that's sort of your personality. You are bubbly, Wendy. <laughs> you are always making people laugh, and you're always just being yourself. Um, how is your day going so far? Well, my day started off in a, in a fish market because I got the wrong address. <laughs> So that's pretty typical of me. You sent me the correct address, Mario, and I ended up in downtown Orlando in front of a fish market, somehow thinking that you did this show somewhere in that warehouse of that fish market. I don't know, but here we are. Nonetheless, I made it. Yeah, so a good tip for anyone listening, if you ever have an address in Colonial Drive, make sure you <laughs> enter the city. If yes. you don't, it'll send you to Orlando. At a fish market, if you're coming to see Mario's show. Any good fish? <laughs> Um, it smelled lovely. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> very good. So, um, for those that don't know you, who I don't know who these people are, because Wendy is You're probably so got the best social media presence of oh, any real estate you. agent in all thank of Central you. Florida, and I say that as a huge compliment. Thank you. Um, because there's a lot of people with more budget than you, and probably more resources than yeah. than you in, in, sure. in regards to you know having a team having. Um, staff doing this stuff for them and you your presence is sort of that you can't hide Wendy. Wendy is everywhere. <laughs> um, you are with Re the uh, Property Pros yep. out of St. Cloud, right? We have three offices. Three offices, go ahead. And I go to kind of all three. I'm the managing broker, but I primarily am in St. Cloud. That's my, my home base. And you also, um, you are a working broker. Yes. Oh, yes. I, I work, uh, yeah, uh, I'm a working broker. I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm, I basically, you know, manage the agents. We have 49 agents. Um, and then I have the Stewart team and we're a team of three plus myself is four. So yeah, I'm, I'm working. Um, I didn't meet you that long ago in person. It's only been about a year, Has even it? though if it, it feels like it's been like 10 years. It feels years. like we've known each other forever. Yes. Yes. And that's the thing about you. So. Um, you have one of those very magnetic personalities. People click with you right away and um, you kind of feel this deep friendship when, when someone gets to know you. Um, but one of the things that sort of um, always um, piqued my curiosity about you before I met you in person was like, how is this person able to be so bubbly all the time? Like, Because you have a, a very strong presence in social media, like I said, but it's not business stuff all the time. No. It's, it's very personal. It's yes. very raw. Um, and just a, for instance, a few days ago, I was scrolling through my Facebook manly, mindlessly, and you made a post about you know being thankful about the times um, where your kids, who are now grown adults, um, <laughs> where that you had to you know, put them in layers to put them to bed because you didn't have enough money to run the heat. Yeah. And, you know, you would have to make them share a happy meal when they had good grades. Um, and, and it was very touching because from that to seeing you now, you know, that's an amazing trajectory. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that trajectory? Like what got you into real estate? How, how did you grind your way to this point? Yeah, so um, I am very transparent about my journey on, on social media, and I feel like people have taken the journey with me. They've kind of been with me, you know, the entire 10 years I've been on social media, and they've seen me from high to low to high to low, and I've been very honest about my journey. And real estate for me this month will be my fifth year that I had, um, that I've gotten my real estate license, but I've been active for the last three, full time for the last two. So um, while everyone thinks I've been in the, in the industry for a long time, I really haven't. I had you know several jobs leading up to going full time in real estate when I knew that I you know had a passion for real estate and this is what I truly wanted to do. I you know I had my corporate America job you know working seven to three p.m. forty hours a week. Um, but I went out and got another job because I wanted to responsibly transition my family and myself from, you know, this wonderful corporate America benefits, you know, holidays, paid time off. 
I wanted to responsibly do it in a fashion where I had enough savings should something happen and I wasn't gambling the roof over my children's head. You know, things don't close when we want them to in real estate, but bills still need to be paid. So it took me a good two years of working three jobs to where I could transition and, and do this full time. And it wasn't easy. You know, I, I was remembering actually this morning being so sick I got the shingles from stress, from just being so stressed out, you know, losing 30 pounds. It was just the constant grind, grind, grind. I'd work seven to three, show houses four to eight, you know, be submitting offers till one, two o'clock in the morning and wake up at five to do it all over again. And I did that for two years consistently. Yeah, and, and I think that's the part that sometimes goes understated in that in social media, a lot of times we just see the, the glamour of the yeah. business. So like, you know, someone is showing a multi-million dollar house and, you know, they'll post a picture and it, that looks great. You feel like, oh, yeah. you, like you're friends with your HGTV friend. Yes. Um, but in your case, you, you, you were absolutely transparent in that you showed the entire journey, the good, the bad, the ugly. And one thing that it seems you do almost as a conscious exercise is you like remembering the bad times. Like yes. whereas a lot of people are like, Oof, we got through that, we're gonna put that behind us. It seems like you almost, I don't know if you do it consciously or not, but you almost systematically go out there and say, hey, um, I, wanna, I wanna sort of remember where we came from. And, and it's not cliche, like you do it actively in social media all oh yeah time. yeah so i journal so i look back at journals um whatever year it is so like that post that morning i had read i had read the kids getting good grades and having to you know not have enough money and i'm gonna get them a happy meal if i have to and being cold and having them put on these layers and things like that so it's my journaling that keeps me in in you know i'm always in a state of gratitude but remembering that really and then i just feel like i have to share it because i feel like someone someone is is either in that position or something similar you know it has to be shared and part of your journey has also been with your credit score oh geez we're going there we are going there <laughs> because you, you've gone there and i think oh yeah you know so one of the things that i find it's very embarrassing sometimes for people to talk about is when they have a bad credit score. And so that's yeah. not something that we talk about. And I think yeah. it's so ridiculous because schools don't teach kids how to manage their credit and what it looks like and what affects it and how to get it better. Um, but tell me a little bit about that, your decision to sort of put that out there and, oh, yeah. and be transparent with it. Well, so here I was, you know, um, getting on my feet, working these jobs, and making, you know, what I thought was good money. Uh, being a renter at the time, I'd been renting for seven years. And, you know, my mom was like, you need to get a house. You need to get a house. You need to do something, you know, with, with your hard work and your money. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna go get a house. Like, and I was an agent, not even, not even understanding credit. So I go to my friend, um, you know, who's a lender. And I say, let's, you know, let's pull my credit. I'm, I'm ready to buy a house. And he pulls my credit and he's like, on what planet do you think you're gonna buy a home? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, you have the lowest score I've ever seen. It's like a 330. So I said, me, like Wendy Stewart? And he's like, all of your names, cause I've been married a few times. And I said, are you sure? And he said, yeah. He said, I said, but I make good money now. And he said, well, that's really good for you, but it doesn't mean that, you know, your previous, you know, um, I had a bankruptcy, I had uh, car repossessions, I had debt, you know, medical things. I had just things on there that in my mind, I thought they just went away once I started making money. No, no concept of credit, you know, at all. So, you know, he kind of guided me and taught me how to, how to fix that. I wasn't gonna pay someone to do it. I just felt like I was gonna fix it myself and, you know, Obviously, people always ask me, well, how did you do it? Obviously, when you have debt, they have to be paid down. You know, you've, you've got to get yourself, you know, you, you got yourself into this mess and you got to get yourself out. And it's not going to happen overnight. It took me a good 18 months of paying down debt and, you know, getting to finally, I got to a 633 and that got me into my home. 
but I shared that journey. I would take screenshots of my Credit Karma score and here I am this week and here I, you know, and every week people would, would watch what was happening and they would call me and say, I wanna get into a house. I wanna, I wanna start, you know, can you guide me in fixing my credit? And I'm no expert, I can, I can guide you. And that's what I did. So the first, you know, a, the first year of my career was just my pipeline was full of people that um, were not know, ready yet. We're not ready yet, and it was fine because I still had my other jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, so I could take this journey with them, guide them through the credit repair process, and did you and do wait. that as a conscious decision at the time? Did you say, hmm? I think there is a business opportunity here in helping these people yeah. and putting them through this no. pipeline that by the time I'm ready to transition full time into selling real estate, I'll have all these people that are basically ready, willing, and able to buy at the time. Was that a conscious decision? No, no, it was not at all. It was just like, I'll be at Starbucks, I'll be at Panera doing my own credit stuff if you want to come watch and I'll guide you. And, and it just four or five people at a time started showing up. So by the time these people were ready, um, it got, that's when it, you know, it got so chaotic in my life that I had to leave the full, cause I got to where I was closing two to three a month. It was all, all of these folks. And the wonderful thing about when you help someone unconsciously is that they started referring, you know, people to me cause I, I hadn't charged them or, you know, they would buy me a cup of coffee and I was happy with that. And, and, and people always feel gratitude when someone is selflessly doing something for them. And so that's one of the things in the real estate industry that I don't think there is enough of. Like a lot of times I'll see people like, you know, we should start this new program towards, you know, hometown heroes, just to mention yeah. a few, um, because there's a lot of them out there that need to buy houses and we can make a lot of money from it basically. And, yeah. you know, I, I think there is a, an addition, it's how to say it. I think there's an additional level of being genuine involved in when someone is doing it like you out of complete selflessness. Like you said, you know, I've been through this and it kind of stinks to try to find information yourself and I've already found it. So if you want me to share some information with you, I'm happy to do that. And then the world sort of repays you back by saying, you know, these people are like, have connected with you now. They've seen that you're human. You're not like this person that's out there just doing like five second, you know, pre-recorded clips about themselves doing greatness, um, you know, and then they come back to you because what better person to help you in the purchase of the biggest asset in your life than someone who has the, been upfront about being selfless. And so it's just an incredible um, story that I don't think gets told enough. And um, one of the things that you touched on is when you're doing this, you didn't know, like you're a licensed real estate agent and you don't know how your credit score is at that time, which just also says something about the industry that you can be a licensed, yes. active real yes. estate agent. But in real estate school, they don't teach you about credit no. either, by the way. No. And so, um, what do you think about that? How do you feel about training and education within the real estate industry? Because obviously that's a problem. Yes, I was, uh, look at my life. I was making great money. Here I was, just pull my credit, I'm ready to buy a house. Those three numbers were dictating the roof that I wanted to give my children. I had everything else, you know, the debt to income, the, all the, the, the perfect storm minus the credit score. And it, it's not taught to us and it should be. I'm not saying that we need to go out and repair everyone's credit and be credit experts, because that's really not our job. Right. But we can provide some guidance and some sort of advice, just like we do with other facets when we're in the real estate transaction. You know, and I think that the problem is a lot of agents are, not all agents, but a lot of agents, you know, if they see that someone's credit isn't worthy or quite there, they kind of move on to the next. They might put, put that, you know, client somewhere and, and touch them here and there but i you know it's more than that some people some people are motivated some are not some people are very highly motivated and they you tell them to jump and they will do it they just need you to hold them accountable you well know? there's probably a lot of people that are looking to put a roof over their children's head you know just that's like a great that's a yeah. great, great motivator and i've always i've always been drawn to the people that have 
been able to identify motivations that are greater than them, but also greater than some external influence, meaning you're not, you're not seeking your motivation from a book or a right. person talking to you. You have motivation because you have to see your kid's face every day and you don't want to disappoint them. You, you seek motivation because you want a standard of living for your family and you're not quite there anymore. And so you're going to figure out how to get there. And so it's funny how in the process you end up building this massive business. I mean, you guys are absolutely dominating the market in, in your area. Um, everyone in town, like I said, knows who you are. And another reason for that is your social media presence. And so tell me a little bit about your thought behind your social media presence in general. So for me, everything um, is intentional on social media. Like if I'm posting, I want it to be intentional. I want to engage you if it's you know, a post like the one you saw the other day, I'm hoping that you'll get some hope out of it, whatever it may be, um, but it's all intentionally done. And um, it's all very raw, organic. I don't really um, like boost, like I don't boost like Wendy in the Cloud or anything like that. Um, if rarely we'll do like, a, if it's an open house or a team event we're doing, we'll boost something like that. But um, I'm not too big into, that or buying followers or anything like that. I don't, I don't do any of that. I figure if you want to follow me, you'll follow me. And I'm sure I get unfollowed a lot too, because I'm sure I can be annoying on there, you know, and that's okay too. Um, but it's all just me. And I try to advise and teach the team the same thing. You know, their, their post should be about, not just about a house or I want people to see their personalities the way that I see them. I want them to see, you know, one of one of my girls is a mommy you know she has a five-year-old and you know i want to see that i want to see her with her daughter she has to take her daughter sometimes to show properties um and i don't mind any of that and i don't think anyone should she's just trying to feed her family same way i was of course and so you didn't go to some class and learn how to do this you no. basically just made a decision that you're a genuine person when somebody meets you at the grocery store and your social media shouldn't shouldn't be any different than that person that they may meet at the grocery store. And that brings me to that, your other project, which you mentioned, it's Wendy on the Cloud. Yeah. Um, you know, the, <laughs> the name is always funny because people Wendy that don't know cloud. that you work in St. Cloud, they may yes. not get the pun, but I think it's like one of the most brilliant names. For well, do you want to know that it did not start like that? Tell me. Okay, so I don't think I've ever shared this. So you're gonna get this tidbit. Um, Very good. And we're about to come up on our one year of Wendy in the Cloud. But I was, uh, when the idea, so in April of last year, it was the first month in my entire real estate career that I had not closed a sale and had not generated any new business. So I immediately thought that I was a has-been, my life was over, and it was a very nice time real estate, but I better start, you know, I was gonna actually go be a greeter in Walmart. That was my next, you know, that was my next move. So I'm like, what am I going to do? I've got to do something, something where maybe I'm not showing enough personality. What am I doing wrong here? So I said, you know, I live in this town. My family has had a business in St. Cloud for 30 years. Um, I want to start highlighting all these local, the mom and pop shops. I grew up in a family business and, and that was important to me. And I said, but I'm not going to make it real estate related. I'm going to visit these businesses. I'm going to highlight the business and I'm going to make it about them. So I'm sitting at this brand new coffee shop with a girlfriend and um, you know, I said, I have this idea. <laughs> and I said, I wanna do you know, this thing. And I said, I'm gonna call it Wendy's Walking the Cloud. And she said, well, that's great. You sound like a street walker. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, how about Wendy in the cloud? So I said, all right, great. And she goes, all right, let's roll. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, let's do it right now. So I said, oh, okay, April 19th, we did the very first one in the cloud in that coffee shop. And um, it just kind of, you know, it, it took off. But how many businesses have you highlighted now? So I've highlighted pretty much every Wednesday at 530, except for if I'm on vacation or, you know, so we've done, I want to say about, about 42. Wow. Yeah. And so this is the type of project that I'm drawn to obviously which is which is you don't have an ulterior motive on it you're just sitting around i would say that 
the best ideas happen in the fringe. Yeah. Meaning um, when you're comfortable and you're getting a couple of listings and you have a couple of buyers you're working with and you have a closing here and a closing there, it's almost like your idea bulb gets turned off. It does. It gets turned off. It and, does. And maybe your process bulb gets turned on because you're dealing with the processes of these transactions, but your idea bulb gets turned off. And so then because of the ebb and flows of our industry, inevitably you get to that sort of slow time and you're like, oh my God, like, what do I do now? Yep. And so for you, it was, I'm going to turn on this light bulb. The idea bulb got put back in and just start doing this thing that it's not even directly related to real estate. No. <laughs> but it definitely has helped to jumpstart your yes. business significantly. Significantly, Mario. It's insane. I laugh about it because it's it's insanity to me that this idea, you know, that I had at two o'clock in the morning when I thought I was a has been, you know, and I don't get paid for it. Same way, you know, when we do these things where there's no getting paid for it, it's our time and just so, you know, I was, I, I just can't believe in everywhere I go now, they're like, Wendy in the cloud, Wendy in the cloud. And people sometimes that don't know it's St. Cloud think it's like Wendy in the cloud because I'm everywhere, I guess. Um, but that it, and it's indirectly brought me business. People, you know, they, they see it. And Wendy in the cloud has brought me about six or seven deals thus far. So. Yeah, so here you have someone that hasn't been in the industry 10 or 20 years no. that has asserted themselves as the real estate expert agent in this town by being visible and being yourself and talking to the people in your town, doing a service to them because you've probably gotten six or seven sales out of it, but how many customers have visited the gym that you highlighted? Or how many customers have visited the the, the one store, the one restaurant that you highlighted. And so it's definitely a benefit to the people that you're highlighting. It's a, it's a benefit to your town. Yeah. Because you've highlighted things that I've gone to my wife and I've gone like, oh man, we gotta go check this out in St. Cloud, <laughs> which I, I would have otherwise, because it's not, on, on, right. it's not in our periphery, we wouldn't otherwise been like, let's go check out St. Cloud and see what's good to eat, you know, this place almost an hour away from home. <laughs> But now when you highlight it, 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 it does that. Um, people that are not from there get to see something that, might be, something that might be interesting to them. And the incredible part is just that. In a matter of a year, you have asserted yourself as the real estate expert in this town. And you did that without having a selfish business plan of, of sort of attack a, a need in the market and, and rip results from it. Yeah. It was a very organic thing. Yeah. Um, when... You have obviously seen a lot of growth. What, where do you go from here? Is Wendy in the Cloud still going to be happening? Do you, you know, where, what's next? <laughs> Wendy in the Cloud still going to be happening. Um, everyone's like, aren't you going to run out of businesses? And I don't think so for now. You know, um, the I think twice I wasn't able to do it for whatever reason. And people were like, it's Wednesday at 5.30. Where's Wendy in the Cloud? And um, so that's, that's cool and neat to me. Um, I'm venturing out of St. Cloud a little bit because other businesses have asked me to. So I don't want to, and I want to bring the people of St. Cloud maybe that don't venture out as much other things to look at. Right. So I've, I've started doing a little bit of that. So for now, no, we're still going to do Wendy in the Cloud. You know, it's, it's until either I'm, you know, you know, dead in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little so, too tragic. A little I don't think too tragic. And if so, that happens, then maybe I'll take it over. You can do Mario, Mario in the, the cloud. cloud. There you go. So yeah, for now. And you know, the best part of Wendy in the Cloud, Mario, for me, I have made so many wonderful friendships from these business owners. And they are just people, you know, just like us. We're, we're self-employed too. So it's, it's the same sort of thing. It's just collaborating and uh, just being united in our community and, and supporting small business. What did you say to someone that's new in the industry? So let's say you know, you're talking to someone that maybe has had the license for a little while but not really active and you wanna give them advice. And the reason I ask you, and I don't ask a lot of people this, is someone that got in the industry 10 years ago was in a very different yeah. market, different, a very different landscape in the industry. But yours is more recent. What do you tell someone like that? I want to be very clear that it is not um, easy. It is extremely, extremely tough. And um, 
you know, there's things that they don't tell you or prepare you for in school. Like they told me it was going to take me six months and I'd be rocking and rolling. And that was just not the case for me. This is my experience, but it's also kind of what I hear. So, you know, um, for me as a single parent with no other sort of extra income, you know, don't quit your job. That's nonsense. Unless you have a spouse that, you know, lets you do your thing. Be um, mindful about your finances. Super mindful of your finances. It's so easy to get these big checks and just, you know, you know, want to splurge. I suggest, you know, for me, it took 18 months. It took 18 months to where I was able to be rocking and rolling, closing one deal a month. And, but that was 18 months of grind, 18 hour days between all of my jobs and just saving, 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 getting out of debt so that I could, I felt getting myself out of debt honestly made me a better agent. Cause like I said, I wasn't rushing to the closing table. If you weren't ready, we were going to get you ready. And if things happened and there were hiccups along the way, it was okay. Wendy Stewart had her family fed, you know what I mean? So it's very important to know that it's not an overnight success. There's so much sweat equity that goes into what we do and, um, and dues. That's another thing. Let's talk about dues. Nobody tells you that at school either. It takes, it takes a chunk. Maybe for some people, it's not a chunk for me. I think $1,600 is what it was. That was a chunk. And I had passed the class. I passed the state exam on the first time, went to go, you know, and they were like, well, you're going to need all this money. And I was like, well, nobody told me that. <laughs> You know, and I had to borrow it from my mom, and um, that was a chunk. You know, to me, that was that was not something that I just had laying around. So I always, and I get approached a lot by a lot of new agents, um, and I love mentoring new. Even if you're not with my, I'll always sit down with anyone that wants to get in the business. But I'm I'm very careful to tell them that it takes you know some money. You need to save. You not you do not need to quit your job. <laughs> And I would give it a year, a year to 18 months to where you're solidly, you know, able to, to be rocking and rolling and, and closing. So have clear expectations, talk to someone in the industry that talk you respect and you admire yes, and be mindful be about your finances. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for doing this, Wendy. Thank we'll do it you, again. Thank you, Mario. This is awesome. Thank you, my friend. Thank you.